The idea of the Silver Show is that we work with a wide variety of artists because if you worked with one artist, you would have one expression. So we've purposely broken it down into lots of different expressions to try and explore a range of sculptural material and image and texture and form, um, but in, in silver. The crucial thing was working with Lynn Chadwick at a very early stage of our casting life. He encouraged us to try a few things out in silver for him, and that sparked off something, and um, Runga and I had this idea, perhaps, what to um, see what else you could do with silver, because it's very little use material for sculpture. Silver is not really seen as a sculptural medium. It's very expensive, it's seen as domestic in many ways, you know, people's cutlery or set pieces on the table or jewellery are, are what come to people's mind. So when we set the brief to 50 different artists to use silver as a sculptural material, they all were very excited by that because it's something new, something different. And we wanted to see what sculptors would make of this material with its other associations and how they would change it into being a sculptural medium. Of course, you know, there was um, an element of cost involved. So we thought, OK, if we contained it 15 centimetres square in any direction, the brief, the sculpture of your choice, material is silver. And the result was just astonishing. It was very interesting. We got a complete cross-section of the sculpture of now in a new material. And because we set a size limit on it, it hung together very well because the material and the size gave the show great homogeneity and it meant that we could explore in miniature across the whole gamut of current sculptural practice. We had a phenomenal response and everyone, of course, still had this hang-up about silver being a little bit kitsch. And so a lot of people covered the fact that the sculptures were in silver. So we had flocked silver, we had dyed silver, we had blackened silver, we had textures and things. So a lot of the sculptures, you really have to struggle to see that it is silver in the first place. After the show, it had, had so much, so much success, many of, our, of the artists who use us started casting in silver to the point where we actually ended up I think last year we cast over a ton of silver in, for sculpture. And we thought, well, let's have another one and see how the whole thing has progressed. And invited some artists again. And this time around, it's quite interesting, no one's covering the fact that it's silver. So everyone's lost the inhibition about silver being silver. For me, the silver is a very special material. It's a precious material, it's an element. Uh, and its main quality is the way it reflects light in such a, an exciting way. And for a sculptor, what you want to do is to reflect some light, but to capture some light as well, to show the form. In this piece called Proteform, the name comes from Proteus, the god of the sea. And he was a sage or a seer, and uh, he was constantly bombarded with questions and tired of this, he would change his form constantly. And I like to think with all of these reflections, these multiforms, that it's very difficult to see the form at any one time and it could be at any point on the point of change. This one's called uh, Lexicon because it holds a whole series of proto-images which might be taken out at any time and be formulated into the complete uh, the complete sculpture. It's a sort of vocabulary of my own personal language, I suppose. But the, the idea really is that they have the propensity to be taken out by the viewer, as well as myself, and be made into a fully realised form, just as you might take an idea out of the brain. For any sculpture, say for instance a sculpture weighed 10 kilos, we may need 13, maybe even 14 kilos of the material to actually cast it. There's a certain amount of material that goes into the runners and riser system. And also you need that, that weight, that force of metal to be able to push the silver that you do eventually use into the mould where you need it to go. All of these pieces are hallmarked 
to 925, which is the sterling silver grade. That's 925 parts of pure silver per thousand. Silver is a, a, a softer material than bronze. Bronze is a hard material that takes a lot of effort to make textures and surfaces, whereas silver is a, a much softer uh, material. But then that brings its own complications because you have to be that much more careful with it. You have to make sure that uh, you work in sympathy with it all the time. You don't work your tools on it too hard to make too deep scratches because then you have to get them out and so on and so forth, whereas bronze is more resilient. With this piece particularly here, you can see from Stephen Gregory, we've achieved some fantastic detail. Each individual little figure on this skull has come out absolutely beautifully. I think we could probably achieve that with bronze. The thing that we would lose is we would lose the distinctiveness of it. Particularly, as you can see, this piece has been patinated black and then we've very gently started to very lightly burnish the surface off to give you the contrast between the black and the white, which really shows up the detail. Quite a few of the artists have really gone to town on silver and really done a lot of sculpture in silver. People like Damien and Lynn Chadwick some years before had really done quite a few sculptures in silver and explored possibilities of polish to texture, of patinated areas to non-patinated areas, and really seen how far you can push it. So we've got some things which are incredibly delicate and other things which are much chunkier and much more about the polish and reflection. Uh, really good variety.